Hello, I'm Jiyun Kim, and I'm a graduate student at Purdue University. This video contains a lecture for the pattern recognition course in ECE department. I'm going to talk about the derivation of Bayes' rule in this lecture. Bayes' theorem is named after Thomas Bayes, an English statistician. Bayes' theorem provides a relationship between probability of A, probability of B, conditional probability A given B, and conditional probability B given A. Conditional probability A given B is also known as posterior probability because it's a probability of A after taking into account information about B. Probability B given A is likelihood, probability of B is evidence, and probability of A is also known as prior probability in the sense that it does not consider any information about B. The denominator probability of B is also known as normalizing factor because it normalizes the fraction into the range between 0 and 1. And you can actually see that um, the denominator is the summation of all the possible numerators. Bayes' theorem is very useful when posterior probability is difficult to compute. For example, given a length of hair, what's the probability that the person is a woman? For the derivation of Bayes' rule, we are going to use two facts. First, the definition of um, conditional probability. Second, when um, the event domain has n numbers of partitions, what's the probability of y? First, conditional probability x given y is defined by probability of intersection between x and y divided by probability of y. In the same manner, probability of y given x equals to probability of intersection between x and y divided by probability of x. Now, for both equations, let's multiply each side by denominators. Then we get that um, probability of x given y times probability of y equals to probability of x intersection with y. And again, this equals to probability of y given x times probability of x. Now, let's get rid of probability of x intersection between x and y. Then we get the equation saying probability of x given y times probability of y equals to probability of y given x times probability of x. Let's assume that um, event domain omega has partition g1 through gn such that the summation um, union of g1 through gn equals to domain omega and the i intersection with the z is empty if i and z are different. Then probability of y is given by summation of probability y intersection with the z i for all i. And again, by the definition of a conditional probability from 1, we get that this equals to summation from i equals to 1 through n of probability y given z i times probability of z i. From 1, we have the probability of x given y times probability of y equals to probability of y given x times probability of x. Now, um, by using probability of y, let's divide each side by probability of y. Then probability of x given y equals to probability of y given x times probability of x divided by probability of y. This is a Bayes' theorem. Instead of x, let's plug in zk. Then um, probability of, uh, um, of the, the event that y is from the partition zk which is probability of zk given y is probability of y given zk times probability of zk divided by probability of y. Then we can replace denominator 
by summation of probability y given z i times probability of z i by using two, and you can see that um the denominator is actually just a constant, so we can get rid of this and think probability of z k given y is actually proportional to the numerator which is probability of y given z k times probability of z k. For the probability of y given z k, let's say the probability follows a discrete probability distribution. Then the probability is replaced by probability that y is same as small y given z k. And in case that the probability is from a continuous probability distribution, then the probability is replaced by the density function f y given z k. The um, density function is derivative of cumulative distribution function. Uh, for example, in 1D, if we differentiate probability of y less than or equals to small y given zk in terms of y, we get the density function. Let's look at more precisely about 2. Um, for 2, we assume that event domain omega has n numbers of partition zi. Then probability of y was um, that was equals to probability of y given z i and probability of z i and summation of all of these from 1 through n. What if the event domain has infinite numbers of z instead of finite number of a partition? Then z is a random variable following a continuous probability distribution. Then we have to replace probability of y instead of summation. We are going to have integral of probability of y given z times probability of z. But in this case, since it follows continuous um, distribution, we are going to plug in density function y given z times density function of z. Again, since this is just a normalizing factor, we can um, get rid of this and get the same results such that probability of z given y is proportional to density function y given z times density function of z. This is all I'm going to say about derivation of base rule. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If you want more information about lectures and the course, please visit www.projectvia.org.